Captain Jack here. The Game Boy Advance released over 23 years ago, but it's still going strong, with the number of homebrew game releases increasing for the system every year. So today I thought I'd look at a few of my favorites from the GBA Jam 2024. All of these are basically new games, as they were just released recently for this game jam, so nothing should look familiar here. There will actually be two parts to this video, as there are just too many games to cover. Let's get started. Discreet Orange sounds pretty cryptic, but it all makes sense when you start playing it. No, the game isn't stuttering like crazy. This is actually the main mechanic here. This is a platformer that has you skipping every other tile when you move. The advantage here is that you can easily phase through walls if you're right next to them, but sometimes even the simplest of actions can be pretty tricky. Say if you want to move to the tile just adjacent to you, you'll have to find a way to disrupt your movement so you can switch over between grids. Almost like as if you were playing playing a bishop in chess, you can only move on either black or white tiles. Getting to something on a black tile as a white tile bishop would be impossible, so in discrete orange you'll have to find a way to switch over. Usually this can be done by a wall that's at least two tiles thick. Moving into it will force you to move just one tile over, switching your grid. Then it becomes apparent to you that this is actually a puzzle game. Holding the shoulder buttons give you a helpful overlay on where you can move to next, but you'll still die quite a bit, especially when dealing with these disappearing blocks or skeletons that only move when you move. You'll only get killed by them if you land right where they're moving to, which sounds easy to avoid, but it actually requires quite a bit of planning. I always like these types of games. They take a simple to understand mechanic and really stretch it to its limits. One of the definitions of discrete is consisting of distinct or unconnected elements, which was news to me and makes sense for the title. Although the fact that I'm learning vocabulary words from GBA homebrew games is very concerning. Beat Beast might look like a Beat Saber ripoff from its very impressive FMV title screen, but I can assure you, oh well, yeah, it kinda is. It really isn't though, because it's more of a platformer where everything happens on the beat. You have to jump on the beat, you have to shoot on the beat, your entire life depends on your rhythmic skills. You can even shoot on half beats if you're pitch perfect or whatever, I don't know. The game is pretty thoughtful though, there's even an option to calibrate lag if you're running the game through an emulator, which... I mean, I I'm just letting you know there's the option. I, I didn't have to use that, of course. But the actual meat of the game here is pretty impressive. Every boss has an instrument tied to them, and the song for that level is crafted around it. And let me tell you, this is some of the cleanest music I've ever heard on the GBA. Some of it almost sounds CD quality. It's all about whittling the boss's health down while keeping yourself alive. Beat Beast is a pretty impressive little demo and a unique take on the rhythm genre. Heels is a pretty unique idea. It has you play in a team of dungeon explorers in a sort of D&D universe, but you only play as the healer named Heels. That's real creative. Your character doesn't actually fight any of the enemies directly. Instead, you'll be managing your squad's health points while making sure you have enough mana. The enemies can only attack one person at a time until their AoE charges up. Then you'll have to go around healing everyone pretty rapidly. You can cycle between a low mana heal with the A button and a high mana heal with the B button. There's also a regen spell with the L button that gives you a long-term low healing option if you only want to manage three people. Heals is kind of a proof of concept, it's actually pretty short once you figure out the best algorithm to take care of your guys. But this is definitely something that could be expanded upon with extra spells and different teammate options. Space Evangelion is a really well put together shmup. You're in the vacuum of space shooting pre-rendered geometric shapes as you make it to the end of each of its short levels. Then you'll have to fight a boss. There aren't really any power-ups to speak of, instead pressing the B button lets you use your power meter on the bottom, allowing you to shoot more bullets at the same time. This gets burned out very quickly though, and you'll have to replenish it with these PW icons that float across the screen. So there's really a game here of conserving your extra firepower for intense situations. This also goes for your health, as it may look like you have a lot starting out, but it never replenishes between levels. So you'll have to make sure you grab the health icons the few times they appear. Every enemy has one attack, but enemies with harder to avoid attacks get introduced as the game goes on. 
ending with these landmine guys that just slowly follow you around. The boss design is also very unique. Not a single boss here is like any of the others. And the most unique one has to be the giant floating space intestine you have to perform an emergency colonoscopy on. Space Evangelion is actually pretty long, and it manages to be difficult, but not unbeatable. Getting around it with Pheasant Birdie is basically Fez running on the Game Boy Advance. But that doesn't mean there's nothing to see here. The presentation is phenomenal, with energetic music and clean, easy-to-read graphics, which are important as you're gonna lose your orientation pretty quick. You'll be swapping perspectives with the L and R buttons as you try to wrap your brain around these spatially based puzzles. This one has to be one of my favorites. It may not be the most original idea, but it gets points for bringing an already established concept over to the GBA, and a complex one for the hardware at that. Unlike the game it's based on, here there doesn't seem to be 3D models that are rotating. Instead, it seems to be using clever sprite rotation, but it looks just as clean. Which one of these great titles was your favorite? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and part two will be released very soon.